you know, sort of last, uh, I'm going to write it out again, but, you know, if you remember last time, we're, we're going about all this Malthusian stuff, kind of thinking about production functions and stuff like that. But let me let me just sort of recap what, what we have. Okay, so um, Malthusian model. Okay, um, and I think I promised a more nuanced accounting of sort of what are the assumptions and, and are they reasonable and stuff like that. So we're gonna we're gonna get into that too. All right, uh, by the end of the class. Um, <clears throat> all right, so so let's go through the assumptions. So basically, we got three main assumptions. Okay, um, so I guess I've, I've sort of been varying the order which I'm presenting them in, but let's let's start off with the production function. Okay. So the production function is going to tell us how much, given like the state of the world, how much are we going to be able to produce? Okay, and so here what we've been saying is that production function looks like this. So you kind of combine um, three things. You combine technology Z, which we've been treating kind of as just a fixed, you know, kind of constant right now. Um, so you know, technology is like if we're thinking agrarian, it's just like you have certain tools out there. Probably in the setting we're not talking about big automated combines or anything like that, but you know you have a certain set of tools and practices that are that you're using to undertake this production. Okay, uh, then you got K, which is land. It's, I mean, it's it's usually it's capital, but we're we're kind of being a little bit more restrictive and just saying it's land, um, partially because it's in we're going to treat it as in fixed supply. Okay, and then L is labor. It's the, that's the population. So we're kind of assuming labor and population are the same. So with in some sense, we're assuming that like everyone works or some fraction of the people work kind of exogenously. Okay, uh, number two, um, land is in fixed supply. Okay, so that's just the assumption, right? Obviously, there's a lot of land and most of it's not really populated. So what's up with that? Um, we'll we'll kind of go through that, okay? Um, and then the other thing is this this demographic function, which, for lack of a better term, uh, demographic rule. I don't know. Um, just tells us, okay, how actually is population growing? Okay, and this is just sort of asserted. Okay, it's not uh, sort of it's not founded on any sort of optimization or you know cho optimally choosing how many kids you want to have or whatever. Um, it's just sort of like this is the rule. Okay, so and it's just the 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 assumption is the more uh, output you have, so the higher the standard of living, the more um, population growth you have. Okay, so um, so one thing I'm gonna do also, which is gonna be useful, just kind of going forward. Oh, we have a chat. We have a little message here. What do we got? Uh, let's record. Yes, uh, that might have. Okay, so maybe yeah. So I'm gonna I'm I'm recording now. I forgot last week. Most of like I'm gonna I'm basically going over Malthusian model now. So there shouldn't be too much or really anything that I'm, I'm not going to mention. And, and, and when I go over it this time, I'm actually going to give you hopefully a little bit more succinct uh, description. So so I don't think there was too much loss from that. But I am recording now, and then I'll post this. I'm going to edit it a little bit and then post it onto... Uh, I can post it onto Canvas. I haven't done that yet, but I'll do that. Or And I, I, I've i done... I've been doing YouTube, so maybe I'll just do both. Okay, and you can uh, pick whatever you feel like looking at. Okay, so... Um, all right. So the the other thing I'm going to do, which is sort of like notational, which is which is we're we're, we're going to be kind of using going forward, is just anytime I write like a lowercase letter that usually is an uppercase letter, right? Like Y. If I write just like lowercase Y, that's going to be the per capita analog. Okay. So in this case, I'm I'm sort of defining Y lowercase Y as little Y, or sorry, lowercase Y as capital Y over all. Okay. So anytime you see a lowercase Letter showing up that you don't recognize from before, it's a it's a per capita thing, okay? Um, and so that's why the the y zero is is lowercase because um, one second, uh, that's why y zero is lowercase because it, it's it's a per capita notion, saying per person what's the sort of subsistence level of uh, income, all right? Um, okay, so you can think about it like that. It's just you have certain surplus on a per capita level, data just sort of maps from that into uh, a population growth rate, okay? And this can be positive or negative depending on whether you're above or below um, that uh, Y0 value, okay? So that's it, um, all right? And so then what we found eventually, right, was that 
uh, you 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 have this sort of stagnation outcome. Okay, you end up converging your per capita income ends up converging to y zero. Okay, and if you want to, and the the easiest way I think to 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 think about this is you know graphically. Okay, and so we're saying okay, there's some relationship here between y on the x-axis. This is like this function basically that we're plotting. Some relationship between y and the growth rate of the population. Okay, which which sometimes I'll just write as g sub l. So anytime I write like g sub something, it's the growth rate of that thing. Okay, so there's some positive linear relationship, and we we know that it crosses zero at y zero, and it's linear, and so it's going to look something like that. Okay. All right, and so the the idea is, you know, where we're you can think about it as moving around in y space. So how is the uh, standard of living evolving? Okay, and so when, one thing that's going to be useful though is is actually oops, writing out what y is. So y remember is y over l, which using our production function is z k to the alpha l to the one minus alpha over l. Okay. We can kind of combine some terms here. So these are the same, and then with the L, we have L to the one minus alpha divided by L, and that, that'll just give you L to the minus alpha, okay? Um, and then we can combine those two alpha terms into just like K over L to the alpha, okay? So this is Y here, All right? So this is saying, um, essentially it's saying this is that that Malthusian notion that uh, the higher that L is, the less land per person you have, and therefore the lower the the output per person is. Okay, and that's standard of living. Okay, so this is this is going to give basically this relationship is going to tell us how to move around in this graph over here. Okay, so essentially, um, you know, we're going to start somewhere. Okay, so so you show up to the world this simulated world or whatever you want to call it. Um, and, and really the, the two things that are important are, well, for, for now take Z, the technology level is fixed. The only thing that's important really is L. So you see, okay, there's a certain amount of population, which implies a certain value for Y from this equation on the left here, right? From, uh, from this equation. Um, and, that and that tells you like where you are in this graph. Okay, so let's say we start out just boom at some initial value for Y. Okay, um, and so then what we're going to do is just kind of figure out how how are we moving around in the space. Okay, so first we can see that we're above y zero. Okay, since we're above y zero, right? This equation here means that that means that the growth rate of L. Let's let's also you know this is GL. Uh, the growth rate of L is going to be positive. So y is greater than y zero. This thing is positive. So GL is positive, okay, and, you, and that's just means that we're above the x-axis on this graph, right? So this is a positive point, and this is, I guess, this is zero here, right? So we're, we're we have positive population growth. So then think about run run the model forward a little bit, okay? The population grows a little bit, say over a year, uh, and so then the next year L is a little bit larger, which means that the it's, it's essentially there's more crowded, okay? There's less output per person. Um, Right, uh, and then next year, and so y is going to go down, okay? So then y is going to like bump down a little bit. So then next year, you're here, maybe it's a decade or a generation, who knows, okay? So uh, we're going to move down, and any time we're up above this x axis in the positive range, that's still going to be true, okay? So anytime we're above here, we have positive population growth, that standard of living bumps down again, that's going to be true again here, and then eventually we're going to hit y0, okay? Now, once we hit y0, Right? Then we're going to plug this in and say, oh, well, the population growth rate is zero. Therefore, the population doesn't change. It just stays at the same level. Okay, And therefore, L is constant, and therefore, Y is constant. So we just stay, we're just stuck at Y zero. Okay? So that's, that's converging from above. Okay? We're, going to, we're going to converge there, and once we get there, we're going to stay there. You can do the same thing below and say, okay, well, Y is below Y zero. Okay? So then this thing... Is actually going to be negative. You have negative population growth. L goes down over time, and ultimately Y will go up. 
okay, because you sort of have fewer people. Um, and so this is going to jump up, jump up, and then eventually converge to y0 as well. So it's, it's, a, it's a stable equilibrium, okay? Whether you start above or below, you always converge to y0. Once you get there, you stay there, okay? That's, that's pretty much it, okay? Um, similar to SR and, uh, um, yeah, so short run and long run fluctuations. Um, let me think. So in terms of the, the time frame that we're thinking about here, um, like whether these are, whether these actually are short run or long run motions, I mean, I, I guess I would think about these as, as more long run kind of things because it's, I mean, it's, it's population growth. So it's just something that happens sort of generationally. Um, uh, in terms of, I guess the, the thing about short run and long run fluctuations, okay, this, and this, is, this was in response to um, a question in the chat. So the, the thing about short run and long run fluctuations, I guess, is that usually short run fluctuations are sort of like you're responding to something that just happened. And then the long run is sort of like you're returning to some notion of equilibrium here. Okay, so, so you could think about, if you want to think about more as like fluctuations, you could think about it as, well, what happens if we were in equilibrium at y0, we're doing our Malthusian stagnation thing for 100 years or something, and then a big shock happens, okay? So what kind of shocks could happen? Um, well, essentially anything that changes these variables, okay? So you could have a shock to technology uh, Z, right? Like a one-time, hey, this guy invented a new type of shovel or like a new way to hook up a mule to a plow or something, I don't know. Um, you could have something like that. You could have a big shock to L, okay, and that's kind of relevant because we did have a big shock to L in an era that seemed somewhat Malthusian, which is which is the Black Death, right? The the plague in uh, I think like 1300 or so. Okay, so I mean amongst other, many other plagues, um, but that was the big one. It killed off like a third of the European population that we know about. So that's a big shock. Okay, so you can think about that. Um, you know, massive negative shock to L, which actually means that in this model, Y would go up, okay? Um, and therefore, you you know, you were, you were going along at Y and then um, L, L, you know, the black death occurs, L goes down, Y goes up, maybe you shoot all the way up here, okay? Um, and, but then that's sort of like the short run jump, okay? But then in the long run, the same logic is still gonna apply. You're gonna, uh, the population is going to recover, basically, okay? Uh, and you're going to get back to that Y0, okay? So, um, yeah, so that that's kind of, you, you could, that, that, I guess that would be an example of like a short run shock and then the long run recovery, okay? That, that's that's one way to think about it. Um, there's the question, you know, empirically, you could think about um, seeing whether that, that actually happened, like when the Black Death occurred did incomes actually go up? So, I mean, that's more complicated because as we well know, I mean, there's many different types of shocks that occur to a society when such a you know traumatic event happens. It's not clear that it's just like, oh, great, we have more land, right? I mean, you lose people. I mean, in addition to being sort of tragic, I mean, you, like, you lose people that have knowledge, uh, relationships, um, just like psychological scarring, like everything you could imagine huge negative effects that could totally swamp all of that, right? Um, so and, and in addition, it's like destabilizing society, okay? So, um, and, and I think empirically, you don't really see a huge amount of action. So that that's a sense in which maybe, well, this model really isn't capturing everything about that particular event, okay? So, um, but it's kind of interesting to think about, okay? Um, yeah, and, and in terms of uh, that population level, okay, the other thing, um, that you can do is, uh, I need a new page, one second. I'm pretty bad at using this. Uh, okay, there we go. Okay, so that was our old page. We're moving on to a new page. Okay, so the other thing you can do is um, actually find the, the population level that's implied by this, okay? Because basically we know what we know that y is going to converge to y zero, okay, um, and then we have this equation here, okay. So if we just say like y zero equals this thing, well we know z and we know k, we can actually invert that to find l, okay. So let me let me just 
if, if I just sort of squeeze it in down here, uh, you know, from this equation, basically, you can solve for L, okay? And you'll get, you know, L is equal, um, You'll, I mean, if you do if you do do the math, uh, I'm skipping a few steps here, and invert that, you're going to get something like this. Okay, so you kind of move z over, move alpha over, and and isolate l. That's going to give you the actual population level. Okay, so that that's um, it's a one over alpha over here. Okay, so you actually get a prediction for what the population level is. Okay, and um. Oh, sorry. That's upside down. That's what I get for trying to do things in my head. So this should be z over y0. Okay, so what this is saying is that um, the population level is responsive to shocks. Okay, so um, if you have, an, you know, this, this for instance says that if you have a, a rise in z, an improvement in technology, okay, then you're going to get an increase in L star. Right. If if z goes up, then l star is going to go up. Okay. And essentially, it's saying, okay, well, we were going along at uh, in equilibrium y zero. Z went up, and that's going to cause uh, y to jump up. Okay. So that this is an example of a positive technology shock. Okay. So that causes y to go up. All right. Um, and what we have we have positive population growth. And it expands. Okay, essentially, when z goes up, sort of, if you want to think about it, like the carrying capacity of the land goes up. So even though we have the same amount of land, we're using it more efficiently, um, and so we can. Th there's going to be more people essentially on that. You still converge back to y zero, but ultimately the number of people you have is larger. Okay, because your technology is improved. Okay, so that's that's and that's different from the the black plague example where it was just. L went down, and then it converged exactly back to where it was after, say, a few hundred years or something. Okay, so that's different because the in the original case it was just a shock, and we went back exactly to where we were. When technology improves, that that's more like a things fundamentally, well, not fundamentally, but they change in terms of the eventual outcome. We don't just return back to where we started. Okay, so um, yeah, so that, that's that's a sense in which you know not all these shocks are going to have the same effect. It just depends on what. Thing you're 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 changing, okay? Um, now, if you, yep, no, nope. yeah, go for it. Yeah, so um, that's actually another sort of depressing implication of the Malthusian model is that even if you get a big technology shock, like in a big improvement in technology, you actually, in terms of Y0, you actually still do return back to Y0. So you, you you get this improvement in technology, and things are good for a time, but essentially you just get more population growth, and so they were, that, that sort of overcrowding perfectly compensates the uh, technological improvements, and you just end up back where you started. So, so you get the technology improvement, and at the end, you just end up with like a denser world. You, you have higher population density, essentially, Everyone has a smaller like farm, but they're using it more efficiently, and so they have the same y zero. It's just like there's more people, basically. Um, yeah. So I mean, it, it depends on it. You know, more people is good, I think, in a lot of ways. Um, so you know, there's 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 a good component to it. It's just like in terms of the actual standard of living, it's the same. Yeah. Okay. So. Um, now, but, but there, there's a little bit more on that too that we're going to talk about in terms of getting long run growth. And that's kind of where I'm going to go next. Okay. Um, so that's, you know, what I'm going to try and do now is sort of adversarial in some sense with the model, which is I'm going to say, well, are there ways that we can escape this? Okay. Because it seems pretty bad, uh, just like converging down to subsistence level uh, uh, output. Okay. That's not a great outcome. So. So there, there, there must be ways that we can try and maybe tweak this or add in some additional element to, to, to escape that, right? Um, so, and and then what we should be doing really is, I mean, first keep an eye on these three factors here. Maybe there's something we can change about those assumptions that are that would make a more kind of realistic outcome. Because at the end of the day, it's not just that it's bad, right, normatively to to have this outcome, although it is. Um, 
it's not good positively if you're looking at anything after, say, 17, 18, 1800s, okay, because we don't see that immiseration, okay? So um, it's something we want to, to change, okay? So production function, actually, it's kind of okay. I, I mean, you can tweak it a little bit. It's not going to be perfect. You know, of course, it's a, a very simple description of a complex world, but, but I think that maybe isn't the first place to look, okay? Uh, the, this assumption about the land being in fixed supply. So, so this is a good place to look, I think, because it, this is actually going to be what we're going to do to transition to the, the next model, which, which I mentioned earlier, the solo model, um, which is sort of a capital-driven growth model. Okay, um, And so to do that, you basically you, you expand your notion of, of K. Instead of saying K is land, you say K is capital, which includes land and also, say, factories and machines and tools and stuff like that, um, and say that you can create capital sort of not out of thin air, but using resources. Um, and that opens up a bunch of possibilities. Okay, so keep that one on the back burner, but that's gonna be basically solo, which is like a pretty kind of a big deal in econ growth world. Um, and the last one to look at is uh, the demographic rule, okay? Which we know uh, eventually, at least, is, is not realistic because if you look at the modern world and you look across um, income levels, you see that people with higher income actually tend to have uh, fewer children. They also tend to be healthier and have longer life expectancies. And so both of those would say that sort of this curve is exactly wrong in the modern era, that you see a negative relationship here rather than a positive one. Okay. So um, so I'm going to I'm gonna run with this one for now. Okay. And then circle back to the, the second one. Okay. I'm going to run with changing the demographic rule and see how that goes. Okay. So Let's start a new page here. So, well, what can we do? So I'm not going to write it out sort of as an equation like I did before because it would be complicated. But, you know, essentially what we want to what we want to have is is something a little bit more nuanced. OK, so uh, same idea for the graph. OK, um, and we're even going to start out the same at low income levels. Let's say this is our Malthusian region. OK, and this is what we saw basically before, okay, that you have a negative uh, area at low income levels, you cross it at Y0 and you go positive. But then eventually things change, okay, let's say you, you're going to turn around at some point and then go down, and let's say then you converge to some level. Okay, so, so this area here is the Malthusian world. This is where you have that sort of demographic transition, okay, and you have if you look at just this part, let's say this is more sort of like the modern world, and then like, okay, so I'm, I'm my graph is like slightly not parallel to where it should be, but let's say then you just sort of converge to some fixed level at a high enough income, okay, like 2% population growth, okay? Um, yeah, okay, this is just going to annoy me, so I'm going to redraw it now uh, to be approximately flat, okay? So that's going to have to be good enough. Okay, so then that's, that's our x-axis here. Okay, and that's why. There we go. Okay, so so that's our new demographic function. Okay, which is it goes up like a Malthusian one, it turns around, goes down like we kind of see in the data, and then just sort of converges to some fixed level. Okay, which I'll just let's draw like this. Okay. Um, all right. So now with this, uh, maybe things can get a little better. Okay. So, um, but there's one other thing we're going to want to change. Okay, because if you, if you think about think about the same logic that I talked about before, okay? Um, if we start out at some point, let's say we start out right here, okay? Uh, what do we have? Well, uh, population growth is positive, okay? That function we had before, remember, relating uh, the, the per capita income level Y to technology land and labor here. This is still true because we still have that production function. Okay, so this thing still is true. Okay, what's n what's not true is that old demographic function. Okay, but this is still true. So if we started at a point here, well, there's positive population, right? So this is still zero. Okay, so there's positive population growth. L goes up, Y goes down, and we move left. Okay, so we're going to move left here, and we're going to move left. Okay, and in fact, even though this thing goes up, it's 
still above zero, okay, and we're just going to keep moving here and eventually end up at y0. So in fact, if we just make this change of tweaking the demographic function, at least so that it's still positive, it just sort of inverts for a time, uh, nothing changes, okay? So that's not enough in and of itself, okay? Uh, we would still just sort of like slide back eventually, okay? Um, so we're going to have to add one more thing, okay? And what we're going to add is growth in Z itself, okay? So G sub Z, right? Which is defined as, as the growth rate of like Z dot over Z, that's our growth rate. This is just the definition, but we're going to say that this is some positive number, okay? So GZ is just some positive number. Z itself, the technological level, is growing exponentially at rate GZ over time, okay? So it's just a fixed rate of technological growth because people keep coming up with ideas, um, improving the, the way that things are produced, okay? Um, and you see, uh, you know, there's been a huge amount of improvements in, uh, in agricultural productivity alone over, you know, the past few centuries, especially in the 20th century. Uh, so it's, I think, pretty plausible, okay? Um, <clears throat> okay, so we can add that in at a little bit of a modern flair of, of continual technologically driven growth, okay? With that, then we can start to make some headway, all right? So now, now we can actually potentially escape the Malthusian trap, okay? So... <clears throat> Now, we need to figure out one thing, okay, which is, uh, and this, this is where this, these sort of growth rate rules that I, was, I alluded to earlier uh, are gonna come into play. Okay, so we wanna, f we kinda wanna figure out, okay, well, there's two things going on. Z is going up, okay, so technology is getting better, okay, which means that um, basically that uh, we're getting more output, okay, and then also population is, is growing, okay, uh, according to this function here, okay? Um, and so those two are going in opposite directions, right? Z is going up, L is going up, but it's in the denominator, and so they're pushing against each other. So the question is which which one wins out, okay? Um, and one way to do that is to think about things in terms of growth rates, okay? So, um, so we wanna figure out, essentially we wanna figure out what is GY, okay? And once, I said, once we figure out what GY is in terms of like GZ and GL, once we figure that out, then we're we're pretty much golden, okay? And and we'll see that, okay? Um, but to figure that out, we actually need to take a little bit of a mathematical aside, okay? So we're gonna do that in a little side quest uh, and then come back, okay? All right, so like growth rate tricks, growth rate rules, whatever you wanna call it. We're gonna have, we, we need to do this first and then we'll come back. Right, and so, but but essentially, let me give you the the, the, the sort of the goal, and then and then I'll show you how to get there. We we know GZ is growing at rate Z. We know kind of we have some idea of what GL is growing at the rate. We want to figure out an expression for GY. Okay, um, and so we need to use this equation and essentially turn that equation into a growth rate equation, and it's just going to make our lives a lot easier. Okay. Um, and so the way you can do it is, is essentially, okay, you know, like with derivatives, when you're in calc, there are all these like this product rule, the quotient rule, the power rule, all this stuff. There's the same basic thing for growth rates because growth rates are just derivatives divided by the thing, right? It makes sense that there should be analogous rules, okay? So there are, in fact, and we're gonna, I'll show you them. The other thing that's helpful is to think about growth rates as essentially the derivative of the logarithm, okay? Because that's, that's what they are, right? So if you think about, think about some um, like time series x. Okay, so x like x of t. I'm gonna write x of it's x of t. It's a it's a you know some time series is moving around time. I'm just gonna write x usually. Okay, I'm not gonna write the of t, but it's just like some time series is moving around. Okay. Um, okay, and so then the uh, g you know the growth rate of x right is x dot over x, okay, so that's just what we, we defined it as before for any random x. Um, but then if you think about it, this is also the derivative of the log of x, right? Because if you take the derivative of the log of x, you get one over x, right, which we see here, and then the chain rule is gonna give you dx dt, right? Remember that the x dot is dx dt, okay? 
So you have one over x here, and then dx dt. That's that's this you know this is is just true by the the definition of the logarithm essentially. Okay. All right. So that's turns out is a useful thing. Okay, because then we can do first. Let's let's talk about the the rule. So we can we can generate like a product rule kind of thing. Okay. So what are we gonna do? We wanna the product rule would say, okay, well we, we have some x, we have some y, okay, and then you know let's say that x is growing at rate g of x and y is growing at rate g of y. Okay. Um, the question is what's the growth rate of x times y? Alright. So maybe maybe this is like x is GDP per capita and y is population and we know the growth rates individually of those and we want to figure out what's the growth rate of GDP itself okay which would be the product of those two things okay so um, okay so then using this okay well we, then we know that this is d log of x times y dt okay um, now the thing about logs though is is we have we have these rules for logarithms right so the product rule for logarithms is going to say that this log of x times y is the log of x plus the log of y okay so that's and that's going to give us the growth rate rule so this is like d i'm going to write it out fully so log of x plus log of y so like the derivative of that whole thing okay and then going to shift over a little bit here so I have more room. You know, the derivative of like a plus b is just the derivative of a plus the derivative of b. It's like a linear kind of operator. Okay, so then we can split that out oops, uh, into d log x dt plus d log, I'm going to lose and run out of space here, d log y dt. Oops. No, I have plenty of space. So I just... This, Okay, um, let me rewrite that under the assumption that I'm not running out of pages here. Um, okay, so we're going to sort of factor that out. So we get d log of x dt plus d log of y dt. Okay, so we just factor out that uh, derivative. And then, well, the first d log x dt is just gx, d log y dt is just gy. Okay, and remember this whole thing is g of x times y. Okay, so the, the, the long and the short of it is if you want to know what's the growth rate of the product of two kind of variables, it's just the sum of the growth rates. Okay, so if x is growing at 2%, y is growing at 5%, x times y is growing at 7%. Just, it's that simple. Okay, um, and you can show it because because these, because these rules for logarithms basically map directly into rules for growth rates. Okay, so, and then from there you can you can derive other ones. Okay, so let's say quotient rule. Okay, so a quotient rule would look like what's the um, growth rate of x divided by y? Okay, right, and now that's going to be well. You can go through. You're going to get well derivative of the log of x minus the log of y which is going to be gx minus gy. Okay? So the quotient rule, kind of maybe not so surprisingly, is just like the growth rate of x over y then is gx minus gy. Okay? Um, and then the last thing we need is the power rule. Okay? Um, so what's this? Well, this is like, well, suppose we have you know, like that production function, we have something to the alpha. Suppose we have like x to the alpha, just some alpha positive, it doesn't matter what it is, negative. Um, we want to find the growth rate of that. Well, well, let's walk through this one a little bit. So that's going to be d log x to the alpha dt, okay, which is, you know, sort of d what? So then with these logarithms, right, we can bring that alpha down from the interior exponent to multiplying it out front. So this is going to be alpha log x dt. Okay, 
then we can bring that alpha outside the derivative because it's just a constant, right? It's not affecting anything. So this is d log of x dt. Okay, and that's just alpha times gx. Okay, so again, you see that those those logarithmic rules, you know, like this g function here essentially acts exactly like log in the sense that if there's an alpha exponent inside, you can bring it out front as a constant. Okay, so with those three rules, we can we can then combine them in different ways to essentially find the growth rate of anything that we want. Okay, and that's what we're gonna we're gonna use those three rules to get the growth rate of that thing up top that we were interested in, in the first place. Okay, so this is all in the notes at the end of lecture one, the the derivation for these rules. Okay, if you want to go back to that, but essentially you got your your product rule, sum of growth rate product the uh, growth rate of the product is the sum of the growth rates, the quotient rule. The growth rate of the quotient is the difference of the growth rates, and the power rule is like you just bring the exponent down as as a constant. Okay. Um, okay, and that that allows us to answer this question of what's how do we get from gz and gl to gy? Okay. Um, okay. So, well, what's it going to be? Um, let, let's 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 do it down here. Okay. So we want to know. What's the growth rate of this whole big thing? Okay, I'm just gonna write it, write it as big giant function g, the growth rate of that thing inside there, okay? And then we just do it one step at a time, okay? So we say, well, the growth rate of that whole thing, well, that's a product of z and this k over l, the alpha thing. Okay, so first step we can say, okay, well, this is then g z plus g of k over l to the alpha. Okay, so that's product rule, first step. Um, then let's say, okay, for the second one, that's going to be basically alpha times g of k over l. So that's the uh, power rule. Okay, so now that alpha we bring from the exponent into a, a constant out front. All right. And then the last thing is the quotient rule. Okay, so this is gz plus alpha that gk over l is going to be g of k minus g of l. Okay, so we just kind of break it apart one step at a time. And, and remember, this is gy, basically. That's the thing. You know, this is this here is gy. Okay, so now we've basically found, you know, you, you, we took that equation, broke it down, used these different rules iteratively, and now we have a, a thing that says, okay, well, the growth rate of y is well it's there's some direct effect of z and then sort of alpha weighted the direct effect of cap, uh, capital or land k minus the direct effect of, of labor okay and if you look at um you know this expression i mean it kind of makes sense it's like z is just out there with an exponent of one this thing is kind of modulated by alpha okay All right and then you know k going up pushes it up l going up pushes it down okay so it, Roughly makes sense uh, there. Okay, so then, um, okay, so now we can we can work with this. Okay, this is, this is actually useful because um, and we can make some more simplifications. Okay, so one thing is like we assume that land is const is is in fixed supply. There's just a fixed amount of land, and that's it. Okay, so in fact, this g k here is going to be zero. Okay, so I'll write this. I'm going to write it as like g sub y. Whether I write g parentheses y or g sub y it doesn't make a difference, okay? So g sub y is gonna be g sub z. That k is zero, okay? And so then we're just left with minus alpha g sub l, okay? So now we can really see, okay, that the effect on y is just the net difference of the effect of z and the effect of l. Okay, that's it, all right? Um, and so now we know exactly how those two things balance, okay? Um, so this is going to be like basically our most important result here. Okay. Um, all right. So now we can we can actually basically use this and then just do everything graphically. Okay. We we need to kind of churn through a little bit to get some analytic results, but after this we can do everything graphically. Okay. Um, now the the one thing we want to do the kind of the big question that we're going to write out and then we'll go up to the graph is you know is gy positive okay we want to know is 
technology growing fast enough that it counteracts sort of the, the, the crowding effects from population growth, okay? As long as technology grows fast enough, even though population is growing, technology can sort of outpace that, then we're good, okay? So is GY positive? Well, that GY being positive means GZ is greater than alpha GL, okay? Just sort of rearranging this equation here, GZ would be greater than alpha GL. Or if you want, rearranging again, GL being less than GZ over alpha. Okay, so that's just rearranging, kind of moving the alpha over here, flipping it around. That means that GL is less than GZ over alpha. Okay, so if um, if there's some GZ out there, I said GZ is you know two percent. Uh, let's say alpha is a half. As long as GL is less than four percent. Dividing, but dividing by half, multiplied by two, this would be 4%. As long as GL is less than 4%, then we're gonna see sustained population growth, okay? So this is like a cutoff. We can call this like GL bar, I don't know. Okay, so that, but this this is also kind of important, is this threshold, this thing. This, this tells us that for a given rate of technological growth, as long as the population doesn't grow faster than that, then we get long run growth. Okay, so let's let's take that, okay? Go all the way back up here. So, so what I had down there was, you know, um, is GY positive? Well, that that depends on whether GL, in the, in this case, that you need GL to be less than GZ over alpha. Okay, so that's our threshold. And the good thing is that this graph is in GL space. Okay, right. So this graph is saying, here's y, and 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 this is like a this graph is just our demographic function. This says, okay, here's a, a given standard of living. People do whatever the, whatever they do out there, and it results in some population growth. Okay, maybe this is two percent. This is like five percent, right? Uh, these levels. Okay, maybe that's a reasonable kind of notion. Okay, but then we can also draw in. Then if we know what GZ and alpha are, we could draw those in, right? We can say, okay, here's that threshold level. GZ over alpha. Okay, and let's say that's Three percent or something. I don't know. Okay, so it's somewhere in between. Um, let me draw a little dotted line. So it's somewhere in between, sort of the terminal value on the right there and that peak in the middle. Okay, and that's just so things are interesting. Okay, so what does that mean? Okay, so what, once we have that, okay, we can actually we can figure out exactly what happens in this model. Okay, because we know, um, so think about, let me draw it. Remember we had this, this is what we derived. Okay, so we know, we, we, we say, okay, let's say we're at some point, initial point here, um, some just some random y, okay? From a demographic function, we can find GL, okay? And this is probably gonna be around 5%. Okay, if it, the, those, those numbers I gave before. It could be anything, but let's say it's 5% at the, at the peak here. Now we can plug that in here, right? And let's say that let's say that alpha is a half, okay? So this term would be like 2.5%. And let's say that GZ is like 2% technological growth per year, okay? So that would mean that GY is negative a half a percent. So in that case, um, given our current Y level of Y, over here, the population growth is pretty fast and it actually, it causes that Malthusian immiseration, okay? So what's gonna happen, we're gonna jump down, okay? We're gonna appear. And what you can see is that anything, like look at these two intersections here, anything in this region between those two intersections, GL is gonna be so big that it actually pushes Y down, okay? so. Regardless of where you start, anywhere in this region or in this region, you're going to move down in terms of y. Okay, sorry, I'm not drawing this very well. You're going to move down, and you're going to keep moving down until you eventually get to this point. Okay. So any anything in here, you're going to end up at that this intersection point right here, which maybe we can call that like y1. Okay. So you're going to end up there. Um, Okay, and then you can do the same thing here. And say, well, what if we start over here on the left-hand side? Okay, 
Well, in this case, you know, population growth rate is zero at y zero. Technology is still moving along. Okay, so if population isn't growing and technology is improving, that means that the standard of living is still growing. Okay, so we're going to move up. Okay, so you can see anything below that point, we're going to move up. So, so really, this black hole here is an absorbing state. Anything down here, you're going to go up to it. Anything over here, you're going to go down to it. So this this is a, a sort of a stable, long run, steady state. Okay, at least for everything over here. Sorry, over here on the left side of that dotted line. Okay, you're gonna move like this, you're gonna move like this. Okay, so it looks still, it looks like the Malthusian world, basically. It's a little better because instead of converging to Y0, you converge to Y0 plus a little bit, okay? But it's it's not that much better because you still converge to a fixed level, all right? I mean, this here here's the world, this is what this world looks like, at least for this lower end is, there's continual population growth, okay? You converge to a fixed standard of living, okay? So there's there's continual growth in technology. There's more and more people. Basically, people are things are getting more and more crowded, but technology is improving enough that things kind of balance out, okay? So it's like a super, super dense, advanced civilization or something, but it is very crowded, and the standard of living is not that good. Okay, so even though you have this exponential growth in technology, what you get is not a huge increase in standard of living. You just get like a one shot sort of bump up from Y0. Okay, we would expect or hope for if you have continually improving technology, you have continually improving standards of living. Okay, and we'll see that later. Okay, so still not, it's like a little bit better, but somewhat of a disappointment, I would say. Um, okay, but that's only for things below this value here that intersection, okay? Once you get past that, imagine you start here, at this, this point right here, at some y right here. Okay, now at this point, population growth is, growth is below that threshold value, so y is gonna go up. And it's gonna stay below that threshold because this thing converges to some, you know, say 2%, okay? So you're gonna keep going out forever all the way to infinity, okay? Um, and you're not gonna, and you're so you're basically your your technology is gonna improve, your standard of living is gonna go up, and your population is gonna continually grow, but not in such a way that it it causes the standard of living to go down too much. Okay, so so you actually have two kind of uh, regimes. Okay, depending on where you start. Okay, so it, it's it's interesting because you get two possible outcomes, and the only thing that determines your outcome is, is where you, you, the standard of living that you initially had, okay? And, and essentially, if your standard of living is initially too low, you sort of get trapped and converge to this Y1 thing here. If it's, let's let's call this cutoff here Y2. If your standard of living is below Y2, you converge down to Y1. If your standard of living is above Y2, then you grow exponentially in terms of your uh, standard of living, okay? So your initial standard of living basically determines everything, okay? Um, so that's kind of interesting, okay? And it, and it's it's interesting because a lot of economic theories are just sort of they're very deterministic. They have one outcome, which is like you converge to some ideal point, okay? Here you have two possible outcomes that are very different. One is sort of stagnation, and the other is long-run growth. Um, and so it provides different predictions, and it also provides a lot of sort of path dependence. You know, what happened to you in the past has an effect on what happens to you in the future, okay? So um, you know, and so so one thing you could imagine is maybe that's you know you could imagine a, a theory where it's like okay this was the Malthusian world before something happens and you get kicked into high, this higher gear and that's like the industrial revolution or something like that right um, there's a few pieces missing but you could imagine something like that um, okay so so it, it's uh, I guess what I'm saying is, you, you know, you can add stuff to the Malthusian model um, that gives you long run growth. Basically, you still do have um, the the land slash capital being fixed, okay, and that means that things are getting, in a physical sense, crowded, which which is probably fine, okay. Um, and so, uh, but but that that would be the dynamic, okay. Um, so you can get sort of 
good-ish outcomes out of this, this Malthusian model. You just have to add in a few things like technology and this demographic transition, okay? Um, but that might not be the best way to think about the Industrial Revolution and modern growth, okay? Um, in particular, uh, it, it might it might be good to just give up on this land assumption, okay? Because it's clear that there's a ton of land out there, for instance, okay? So, um, and and so that's kind of where we're going to go next. But but if you want to think about how to place this Malthusian model sort of in context, I mean, like, th there's always um, kind of people that are concerned about sort of what I would call like a fixed factor, like potentially like land. Or oil is another example. People are really concerned about running out of oil for in like the 70s and 80s. Um, you know, helium, or people are concerned about running out of helium. They're concerned about, well, of course, they're concerned about running out of like good, the, you know, the environment, basically climate change. Okay, so people are always concerned about this kind of stuff where it's like, there's a thing that we need to live. Maybe it's land, whatever. Okay, uh, and as we start using more and more of it with population growth, what happens? Are we able to get enough to sustain everyone? Up until now, the answer has been like unequivocally basically yes, okay? I mean, there have been major issues here and there, but like essentially as the population grows, we kind of figure out what to do, okay? But Mal so, so Malthus was sort of one of the original sort of, oh no, what's gonna happen? Are we gonna be able to do this, okay? He turned out to be wrong because we we did it. We did sustain a huge amount of population growth. Okay, and some of that was because of big advances in agricultural technology. Um, and then if you look at uh, the pe people worried about peak oil, right? So like the Hubbard Peak and all uh, that stuff. Um, they were worried that there was essentially X amount of oil. We were literally burning through it. Population was growing, and we were going to run out, and there was going to be some huge civilizational collapse, right? And so what happened was, it was true that if you looked at the amount of oil that was sort of out there discovered, okay, either above or below ground, it was, you know, it looked like we were going to route. But but what happened was people were like, well, we need oil. Let's look, let's look in more places. Let's drill deeper. Let's do, for instance, fracking, which we know from, um, you know, Western Pennsylvania, especially. Uh, let's look in other places, basically. And they found more oil. Okay, so um, obviously there's also clean technology, which is an important sort of alternative there. Uh, but but the idea is that, you know, if you have that fixed model of the world where there's this one thing that you need and you can't live without it and we're going to run out, if you think about, okay, well then as we're running out, the incentives to find more of it are going to go up or to find a substitute for it, at least, are going to go up and hopefully maybe that's going to drive people to actually go out and find those substitutes. Okay, so that's that's the idea, and um, yeah, and so here you, you maybe you can think about that. This maybe there was Malthusian pressure, and where did think where did the model kind of give way and 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 open sort of open up to a new era? It was like different types of capital, right? So uh, the steam engine and all of that, like uh, sort of new types of technology that made it and so we weren't just an agrarian society we we're an industrial society and so that's sort of where things gave way and so and then maybe it's not clear whether that just sort of happened because people th sat around and thought about stuff for long enough that it eventually happened or you know there were pressures and you'd say, people are saying okay we need to do this we need to, to discover this stuff and it's probably a bit of both okay um but yeah so so i guess what i'm saying is like i, I think the Malthusian model is, is an instance of a, a common refrain of sort of like how do you deal with long run growth? Okay, how do you deal with all that? And I think, and, and of course, the the big one now, or not just now, but like for for some time now, has been has been climate. So it's like that's a little different. It's not like you know a resource per se that just sort of like is countable, but it's like you know environmental degradation is the thing that occurs. And so the question is, what's you know what's going to be the end game there, right? And so. Um, I mean, so you, so you might think that, uh, well, I mean, one end game is that we just ruin the environment. That probably is possible, although rather unfortunate, um, or the climate. Um, but the other end game is you, you know, come up with alternatives, right, to burning fossil fuels like clean technology, uh, solar, battery powered hydrogen, and all that, um, that are less, uh, that emit less CO2 and other uh, greenhouse gases, and you kind of get out of that issue okay so um hopefully that happens but that you could think about that as sort of in the sort of same scope of of sustainability i guess is what i would call it okay so um 
yeah, and then I think, um, yeah, so so that's that's where I put Malthus. Okay, uh, he was okay. I think he had, you know, he he had a decent idea, and then it uh, th everything changed basically. Um, uh, but you can think about it in a broader context. Okay, so um, and then part of that, you know, you know that transition the, to the industrial revolution though is this capital driven growth. Okay, which which is what we're going to talk about next. Okay, so um, now some a lot of what we are going to talk about with this next phase, which is going to be the solo model. Okay. Um, it, you know, a lot of what we did thus far is actually still going to be useful. Okay. So for instance, the whole, that production function that we're using, basically the same thing, except I mean, it's going to look the same, except we're going to redefine K instead of being land, that's going to be capital, which is a broader notion. Okay. Um, we're going to sell technology, all that, that's going to be growing. Um, yeah, and so and population, all that. So so that sort of structure is going to be the same. We're just going to loosen up that fixed supply of, of capital, okay? Um, and that's going to that's going to give it that's going to make it a lot easier to generate long run growth. It's not like going to have to rig it up and make sure that this curve goes the right way over here and and everything holds together. It's just going to kind of naturally come out that you have you know exponentially growing technology. Um, you can invest in capital as technology gets better. You want to invest in more capital to produce more and things just kind of naturally work out. Okay, so that, that's going to be a little bit more straightforward and less kind of just so as sort of a story. Okay, um, and and we can, we'll can we we'll be using our, our kind of the growth rate tricks that, um, that these question power, you know, product rule, all that. We'll be using that kind of to help us along. Okay, um, yeah, so I guess I probably don't have that much time um, yeah, I mean, I'll have like five minutes, but yeah. So, but, but in terms of how to, to, to think about this, this next solo model. Okay. I mean, uh, so I guess you want to think about like, well, what is capital? Okay. Um, in, in this case, okay. Where, I mean, capital is going to be sort of defined by how we use it. Okay. In, or how we think about it in the model. Okay. So, um, Essentially, uh, let me add another page here. You know, essentially, what's going to be happening though is you know you're going to have some. Let's see. We have a couple different factors here. We have output. We got capital. Uh, and we have labor. Okay, so just straight up, you know. Um, Standard capital labor output. Okay, so and what's going to happen is, well, capital and labor are going to team up and produce some output. Okay, so I don't know if I should maybe I should draw it as like they're like converging. How we're splitting the returns from capital and labor it has not been decided yet, but they're going to team up and produce output. Okay, um, all right, and that's that's our production function, right? Remember, you know, it can be many things, but usually we're going to assume it's going to look like this. Okay, so that's a production function. Uh, now you get this output. Okay, I forget one more thing. Well, really, in some sense, um, <clears throat> you're gonna get this output and some of it you're gonna consume. Okay, and that's gonna go to people and people are the ones that do labor. So let's just say that's that's like consumption. Okay. Um, and then you're also gonna have investment. Okay. So you're gonna, basically you're gonna get this output you're gonna say, okay, well, some of it I'm gonna invest. I'm gonna like take, in, you know, I have this steel instead of building a, I don't know, a car or something that I can drive, which is more like a consumption kind of thing. Uh, I'm gonna build a factory uh, and and build out the capital stock. Okay, so basically, you get the output and you decide, am I gonna consume it or am I gonna invest it? Okay, just like an investment consumption sort of classical, dynamic, static choice that people are making. Oh, that's not gonna be a choice. Um, we're just going to assume that you invest a certain fraction of output, okay, at any given time. That's that's it's, it makes things simpler, okay. Um, so and what so what happens over time is okay, you get the output, you do some investment that makes capital. If you have more capital, you get more output, and you can invest more in the future, okay. So now it doesn't just explode where it's like, oh well, I got more output, so I made more capital, so I got more output. There's decreasing returns built in, okay. And since you have this decreasing returns, that stabilizes everything, so it doesn't go off the rails, okay. So that's the that's going to be like really at a 
you know, conceptual level, what's going on with Solo is it's just sort of figuring out and kind of analytically writing down how that process works and what you need to assume to make sure it kind of stays on the rails. Um, and uh, yeah, and then so that'll give us sort of base outcome. On top of that, then we can add in technology, right? So technology is like another thing that influences output basically. Okay, it'll give you more, more output for a given set of inputs. Um, and that's gonna kind of like supercharge things, okay? And so that, that's gonna be what might generate long-term growth, okay? So that's, that's, this bit, that's sort of the you know, flow diagram version of the Solo model. We'll write it out with you know, proper equations um, next time, but that, that's sort of where we're going. 